What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the noise texture node in order to add a lot of different looks or variation to your shaders inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I've got a shader editor window open right here, and then I've got my 3D viewport right here, and I've just created a simple material and turned the roughness down so that we're getting more reflectivity on our object right here. So it kind of looks like uh, some kind of plastic or something like that. But let's add a noise texture node. So we're just gonna do a shift A. We're gonna add a noise texture node right here. And so notice how there's two outputs that come out of the noise texture node, right? There's the mathematical factor and the color. And so in general, we're gonna use the factor for most things, but let's start by dragging the color into our base color of our principal BSDF shader, just to kind of look at what this does. So there's several different values that are output out of this texture node. So for example, the scale, Notice how if we adjust this, it's going to adjust the size of the noise that's being created. So detail is going to add more noise octaves to this. So if you drag your detail to the left, right, you don't have a whole lot of detail in here, um, meaning that these objects are gonna be larger and there's gonna be less kind of like noise in between them. So the higher your detail goes, the more, um, the more detailed this is going to look, but the longer it's going to take to render. We can take a look at this a little bit more in a second. The roughness is basically going to affect the blend between a smoother noise pattern and a rougher noise pattern. So notice how if I drag this all the way to the right, um, I'm getting a lot more detail in here, if I drag this to the left, everything kind of blurs together a little bit more. So if I drag this to the right, notice how this kind of acts a little bit more like a stone or something like that. Um, if I drag it to the left, it's just kind of this like colors blended across here. And you're gonna do a lot of playing around with these when you're using this to create different effects in Blender. And then your distortion is basically going to distort, distort the effect that's created. So notice how if I drag this down and I drag my distortion up, um, you know, if I have my distortion set to zero, then my noise is a little bit more natural looking. As I drag this distortion up, notice how it seems like it's kind of like pulling this noise almost into bands or something like that. Um, so the distortion is just gonna give you a completely different effect. Um, usually I leave the distortion at zero unless I'm going for a specific effect. And so notice how you can also adjust the dimensions that this is evaluated in. Um, and you're not gonna use this too much. Usually I just leave it on 3D. The other dimensions will give you a lower render time, but they do give you a different result. Like if I put it on 1D, for example, notice how this is just kind of giving me like one color in here, right? If I go to 2D, then I've got more like vertical bands in here instead of um, kind of the noise going in all the different directions. If I go to 3D, we'll get the effect we already talked about. And then if I go to 4D, that just gives me another value that I can adjust in here. The W is gonna correspond to like a fourth dimension. Um, I don't really use the 4D very much. Uh, usually I stay kind of in the 3D. I find that serves what I'm trying to do just fine. And so there's a number of different things you can do with the noise texture node. So let's say for example, that we've got this noise texture node and we, we don't really need that kind of like rainbow color that we were just creating. What we wanna do instead is we wanna use the factor in order to adjust the way that things react inside of Blender. So for example, let's say I was to drag the factor into my roughness. Well, what that's going to do is that's basically going to add some noise to that roughness. So notice how when I do this, I'm not getting that like super smooth, almost unrealistic looking smooth with no wear on it. If I was to just drag this factor in here and then adjust the scale, notice what I can do is I can use this to adjust where light is going to, ref going to reflect off of my object, right? So if I look at this, um, notice how now there are some areas where the light is really reflecting a lot. There's other areas where it really isn't. So you can use this to do a lot of different things. Um, you can use this to kind of like simulate different metal materials, or you could also use this to just kind of add some noise to your object so that it looks like it's got some kind of like wear or imperfections. And so for some of these, these inputs don't really affect things very much. So the detail, for example, on this one, um, it is affecting my result a little bit but I get a lot stronger result by adjusting my roughness in here. Um, in other places, the detail is going to affect things more, but in this case, the roughness is really what's gonna give me that kind of like more interesting effect in here. But again, just notice you're gonna kind of play around with this in order to create some different results. So you can use the noise texture um, node in order to adjust roughness. And so a lot of the time, what you might find yourself doing is you might find yourself using this in order to combine colors or materials on your object. 
So we've talked a lot about the color ramp node. So if we do a shift A, I add a color ramp node and I will link to a tutorial about the color ramp node in the notes down below. But let's say I was to plug a color ramp node in here and we're gonna set this um, so that it transitions between maybe like a green material, so something like this, and a blue material. So we'll drag our blue material in here just like this. So right now, right, all this is doing is this is just kind of giving us um, kind of the average of these two. Then you can adjust the result by adjusting these sliders, right? However, if you were to take your noise texture node and plug your factor into the factor here, now what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you um, noise where different colors occur in different locations. So for example, right now, if I adjust my scale up a little bit, notice what this is doing is this is kind of splitting this between those different colors. And then this kind of gets interesting because you can really affect how strong those two different colors are by adjusting the sliders right here. So you can use this to make kind of a strong transition between different colors in order to make these kind of like interesting, this is almost like a stone or a granite or something like that, or it would be if I hadn't created these uh, these different colors here, but you can use the noise texture um, node in order to dictate where those colors occur. And so if you wanted to, you could drag your color into your displacement over here. So you could actually use the noise texture node in order to add displacement at different locations in here. And obviously this is kind of a strange result. Um, so again, there's like certain times when you would use this and certain times you wouldn't, but you can use this in order to add displacement to your object as well. So again, kind of an interesting application. Um, notice how it really feels like you get better results if you kind of bring your roughness down a little bit. But um, using the noise texture information, you can create a lot of interesting things like this. Um, separately, if you wanted to add your own noise texture node or a separate noise texture node, you could do some interesting things with that as well. So if I take my noise texture, plug my color into my displacement right here, Notice how I can do things like adjusting my scale and my detail. So if I wanted to make this look more like a rock or a stone or something like that, I could use a noise texture modifier in order to quickly do that um, inside of my model. And again, let's say that we were to unplug our base color here just to get kind of an idea. So what you might do, right, is you might have a material that has a lot less roughness in here, but it's got the noise plugged into your material output right here in the displacement. So again, you could use this to create this kind of like stone looking material really quickly using just your shaders. All right, so another thing you could do with the noise texture node is you could also plug it into your emission. So if we add noise texture right here and we plug our color into our emission color, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me emission in here. But the problem is this isn't very defined, right? What it's doing instead is it's adding light pretty much everywhere across this whole surface. We could just do the same thing or we could add a color ramp node right here in the middle. And then we could set this by dragging these closer together. So if I drag like my darks and my lights closer together, Notice how then I start getting a really defined location of my emission like this. And you can use your scale, your detail, and your roughness to set kind of where that occurs. But then when you kind of drag this up a little bit and you bring your emission strength up, you get this really interesting glow that's in here. So you could use your noise texture modifier to set where that happens or how large that happens. And then you could set your emission strength over here. And you could do this with colors as well. So let's say you wanted this to have like a red material or something like this. So I could drag this down and then you could use this and kind of like have it scale up or you could also have your emission strength move up and down. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could animate this um, so that this uh, kind of pulses up and down just by keyframing this value. But then the other thing that you can do with all of these noise texture nodes is if you add a mapping node in here, as well as a texture coordinate node right here. So if you plug your generated into your vector like this, then you can adjust things like your location on your surface right here. You could also adjust rotation if you wanted to do that or your scale on your different axes. So you can add this series of nodes in here in order to adjust how this sits on your object right here. 
So there's a pretty ridiculous number of applications that you can use this for. We can talk about those more on the channel in the future if you're interested, but for now, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you have any questions, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.